okay so in the today's session what we'll do is we'll see how to create the implementation user and how to assign the roles so this is what we discussed in the today session so we'll see the implementation user creation and we'll assign these roles already we discussed what is the purpose of these roles okay so when you assign this role called as application implementation consultant role to the user so that user will have access to fsm functional setup manager with the help of functional setup manager user can create the projects they can create the project and they can start working on the system related configuration when you assign the role called as it security manager to any user that user will have privileges to security console to work on user related tasks it can be user creation or any pass resetting the password and other privileges and uh, assigning the roles and custom roles definition those areas of access user can get because of it security manager employee there are many functions where user can have access because of this role the primary functions are where the user can submit the job or request or say report so now we'll see the process okay so here <coughs> To just access the instance, I'm I'm going to use one user called as Cloud. For your practice, okay, I'll be providing the same or a different user. With that, you can go and log into the instance. Then you can follow the process what we are going to discuss now. So this is the instance we have. So provide username, say Cloud, and just provide password. So for this user also already these roles are assigned. These roles are all already assigned. But anyway, whatever I'll be sharing with you. Okay, just so that user will have a complete privileges, but uh, you are not going to use that user for your practice. You'll be creating your own user and you can go with the, uh, whatever the task we are going to perform in the same sequence, okay. So we'll talk on this, what, what are these icons and other information, what you could see here. Now we'll focus on the point called as how to create the implementation user in the system. So now just log into the instance. After that, here in the left side, you can see navigator. Okay, just click on this icon. It will open the navigator. So within the navigator, you can find tools section. Under tools, you can find one task okay task called as security console we can create the implementation user from security console when you talk about employee user employee user will be creating from hcm human capital management okay so first log into the instance it's not a big task but i am going to repeat it okay so i will be sharing the user credentials by using that just log into the instance in the left side you can find the navigator icon just click on that navigator icon it will open the navigator where this user have access to which areas of functionalities related to different applications okay that that part will focus after some time now what we have to understand is once you click on navigator you can find the tools section under tools we have to access to task called as security console just click on security console okay just click on security console what is the meaning of this message and all this will be understanding after some time just say okay or say close anything you can do it now just select this user tab select the user tab and here we can create the new user so here we have a tab called as add user account click on add user account and here you can provide the user first name last name but we'll go with the mandatory fields so here we'll create the user called as Uh, say cloud ERP I'll give the name as cloud ERP 
and the same name system is defaulting as username you, you may override or you can accept the same and provide the password so here I'll just give some password and confirm the same Done. now you can save the record or else okay just let's save it so that we'll see how to find that user and how to open that definition just I created a user that's all now I'm going to find the same user cloud ERP then click on search so this is the username we given for login and if any time if you want to reset the password for this user here you can under actions you can find the different functions where you can reset the password or else you can log the account or you, or you can delete the account so we'll just if you want to reset the password you can just click on this and you can go with a selection of manual and you can give the new password and you can confirm this is how you can reset the password for your user anytime now what we want to do is we want to assign the roles to this user already we discussed the three roles we, we have to assign so that this user will have a full privileges to the system to do any kind of configurations so to assign the roles to the user click on login name and click on edit just click on edit here you can see the tab called as add roles even the same tab you can see at the time of user creation also so for example you want to create user mm -hmm. will be providing the name okay last name username password confirm password here will be finding the same tab after giving this information you may assign the roles right away okay fine so we created a user to this user we are going to assign three roles click on the user login name then click on edit then it will open the option where you can assign the roles to this user to assign the roles to this user click on add roles tab so what roles we have to assign the first role is application implementation consultant so here just type that name application implementation consultant Okay. so application implementation consultant this is a seeded role which Oracle is providing and the same role you can see which is ending the suffix of su suffix as a copy that means we have a just we have an option where you can copy the seeded roles since to somebody copied this role okay so that is the reason system is displaying another role with the same name which is ending with a copy but don't use the other roles which you see as a copy or some other extension so just go with the seeded role as assignment only okay role name is application implementation consultant just select it so that it, system is displaying here and if you notice here the role name is application implementation consultant you can see here as well as here also both are same these two role names are same but code is different okay this role it is starting as ASM okay ASM application implementation consultant and here ORA prefix it is getting started with the ORA you can assign any one of the role you don't need to worry about the which code we have these two roles will have a same privileges okay these two roles will have a same privileges you can select any one of the role don't have any issue in terms of access privileges so i'm just selecting the same role with the whatever the code we have as asm you can select any one of the role. two roles are same but don't go with the copy roles I'm selecting this role just click on that it will get selected then click on add role membership that means this role will get assigned to our user the role application implementation consultant world was added to the user say okay the same you can see in the background added another role is it security manager it security manager 
so it is security manager somebody copied and they mentioned not don't use it that's a good job really so it security manager so just here also we have the same role with the two records one is starting with fnd here also fnd but prefix we have as ORA. these two roles will have same privileges any role you search it, it can be dif uh, it can be available with a tool definitions with the different codes but you can use any one of the role but don't go with uh, some custom roles which are copied and modified if you go with this there may be some changes maybe somebody just copied the seeded one they might have removed some options which will find as a privileges so i'm selecting the first one and say assign the other role is employee select and you can go with any one of the role which starts with ORA or anything any role you can select there won't be an issue then say done okay so we created so add role manually we added and uh, add auto provisioning roles we'll talk on that we can uh, for specific uh, definitions you can uh, specific you can automate the role assignment also that you have to perform separate task called as role mapping which would be part of HCM okay we'll be discussing those points but now just we assign three roles now just say save and close okay just click on done we created our own user and we assigned required roles as a normal practice what we have to do is see what happens is so <clears throat> when we deal with user we are doing this activity from security console console from here we are creating user but this user part is connected with IDM for this actual user definition whatever you are doing from security console that will be reality that user definition will happen the user interface they given in the security console to create the user but the, all the user related definitions will be getting stored in the IDM and the roles what are the roles we have okay the roles whatever we have those all roles by default as a source will be part of APM authorization policy manager okay but reality this is what we have to understand the user definitions are belongs to the middleware component called as our application called as IDM and the roles whatever we are dealing here for user assignment those will be related to APM up to release 11 we have access to IDM and to APM directly you can go and you can create the users but now they're restricted from 12 the users they're given the provision of creating from the security console but the actual user definitions will get stored in the IDM only and the roles which you are able to access from security console for the roles the source is APM only authorization policy manager or access policy manager but from 12 directly you cannot access to this IDM or APM but whatever we do those are connected with IDM and APM only okay so now what happens is whenever you create the user that will get stored in the IDM and the roles whatever you are assigning to the user those will be part of APM so we have a separate servers to run this IDM and do APM applications as a part of middleware and again we have a concept called as LDAP LDAP okay LDAP this is the directory service this also will be part of middleware directory services we have as a part of middleware LDAP L stands for lightweight D stands for directory A stands for access P stands for protocol lightweight directory access protocol this is the directory service what this directory service will do is whenever you create user and assign the roles to that user that information will be submitted to LDAP directories okay LDAP directories so the for which user which roles you assign that has to be updated in the LDAP directories once that is updated 
the proper privileges the user will be getting from the roles which got assigned to that user. If you take example of EBS, we'll create user and we'll assign the responsibility. So directly the user can have access to that responsibility once they log in with the same user. But in case of Fusion, then the same way it works, but before the user will go and have access to the roles which are assigned to that user, that assignments need to be updated in the LDAP directories, which is a part of middleware service. Within the middleware, we have LDAP directories. What happens is whenever you create the user, that information should be updated in the LDAP directories. And whenever you assign the roles, okay, just now we assign these three roles to this user. Okay, the roles for which user, which roles are assigned that has to be updated in the LDAP. So when, when the user is going to access to the instance, what system will do is as per LDAP directories, which roles are provisioned to that user it will see, then the user will be able to work on it. You will come across with the cases where you will assign the roles to the user, but when you log into that instance, so what are the roles you assign to the user, the role related privileges you cannot see immediate base. Until unless that assignment is updated in the LDAP, okay, this lightweight direct access protocol directory services, the user cannot have access to the roles even those are assigned. That means what are the roles we are assigning to the user that assignments need to be updated in the LDAP directories. As per standard process what Oracle it is, whenever you assign the roles to any user, that information will automatically will be updated in the LDAP directories. But sometimes, okay, system may take time to update that information. That is the reason what Oracle recommends is whenever you assign any roles to the user, better you can go and submit a LDAP request here we call as job here we are not calling as request the term they given as a job we have to submit the LDAP job whenever you submit the LDAP job what system will do is it will try to synchronize for which users new roles are assigned that information it will go and submit in the LDAP directories so that immediately that user will be able to have access to the relevant role related privileges okay now we created user and we assigned the roles to that user okay automatically this assignment will get updated in the LDAP directories but if you want to speed up the process what you have to do is you have to go and submit the LDAP job you have to submit the LDAP job when you submit the LDAP job so what are the new roles assigned to any user those will get updated in the LDAP directories so whenever the user is going to have access to the system immediately they'll be able to have access to the relevant privileges what are the functionality we have as a part of the roles they'll be able to connect to that otherwise even roles are assigned to the user those may not work if those are not updated in the LDAP directories so this is the point we have to understand here so we'll just go and submit that LDAP job after submitting if you have any questions we can discuss on that okay so we'll see how to submit that LDAP job so go to navigator Under tools, okay, under tools, you can find one task called as scheduled processes, scheduled processes, okay, this scheduled processes, you can see from any user, if employee role is assigned to that user, if you assign the role called as employee, then the scheduled process task user will be able to have access. Okay, take example EBS. EBS. In case of EBS, we have a SRS window, right? Standard request submission window from where you can submit the program or report. So, similar to that here in Fusion, we have ESS job page. ESS. Okay, in case of EBS, SRS window. From where you can submit any job any uh, report or program okay equal to that here we have ESS job page ESS stands for enterprise scheduler service okay this is also enterprise scheduler is one of the middleware component again these services also will be running as a part of middleware service okay in case of EBS concurrent manager we have right concurrent request 
So those all concurrent any request you can submit from SRS window. Here we are calling as enterprise scheduler service. Okay, enterprise scheduler service. So if you want to just navigate to SRS page, we'll go with a request. If you just go with a request, it will be will be landing in the SRS page here. If you want to navigate to ESS page. This is a navigation. You have to go to schedule. Sorry. You have to go with this under tools. We have a task called as schedule processes. If you click on that, then system will take us to ESS job page. ESS stands for enterprise scheduler services, which is equal to SRS window in EBS. Okay. We'll see that. Dutchman, can you write those uh, elaborated names beside that ESS and LDAP so yeah. that we remember? Okay. So SRS, this is an EBS term only. Right. New one uh, uh, on the fusion side. Okay. ESS and LDAP. So it is enterprise. Scheduler service. So LDAP. Lightweight directory access protocol. Fine. So lightweight directory access protocol. This is enterprise scheduler service. So here how to navigate to that ESS job page you have to go to tools under tools we have a task called as scheduled processes. So here just click on schedule new process in case of EBS submit new request. Once you click on that there in the case of EBS also you'll see the pop up where you can see requests are request set but here that same name they are given as a job or job set. Now which request you want to run which job you want to run LDAP right just don't call it as just LDAP just use the term as just uh, LDAP okay. So we have to submit the LDAP job just type here LDAP LDAP okay. Then tab out, use tab, it will fetch relevant jobs which are available. The first one we have to submit. Retrieve latest LDAP changes. Okay. Retrieve latest LDAP changes. You select it and then say, okay, this is a job which you have to submit. What this job is going to do, you can see the description. Not only for this job any report or any process anything you are going to run in the fusion you can find the description what purpose okay or else what the job or report will do it when you say report which information the report will fetch the description you can see when you are submitting from here or if you are going to submit any job so you can see what purpose you are submitting what it is going to do that you can see as a description whatever you submit from here so what it will do it will synchronizes the users the user related roles and within the roles what are the grants permissions we have with definition in LDAP within the LDAP directories the users related information what are the new users are created or else there may be some existing users for those existing users what are the new roles are assigned within the roles what are the grants privileges are given to those users all these updates it will take into LDAP okay lightweight direct access protocol which is the directory services in fusion applications which will be standing in the level of middleware it's a middleware component or services you can say say okay and another point is the job which you are submitting this will be running at in instance level entire instance level it's not specific to your user you can submit from any user but it will be running at instance level so the same time see now i'm going to submit this say you and me are working on that instance you created one user and you assigned few roles i created one user and i assigned few roles but i'm going to submit this job you no need to submit that means whatever i submit 
system will be running at instance level within the instance what are the users and roles assignment happen everything it will be submitting to ldap directories it's not user specific instance specific okay so this is the point you have to understand just say okay just click on refresh lakshman is this step mandatory or optional you should do it as mandatory but you will see the case where after assigning the roles you will be able to have access to role related privileges so in that case you can think even without running it is happening but it's recommended there are many cases where it won't happen until unless you run this otherwise you have to wait for certain period of time maybe half an hour one hour also that is the reason whenever you assign the roles as a standard practice you can go and submit the ldap job then you won't have experience of where user cannot uh, even roles are assigned there is no privileges which you can see from that user side so if you don't run, submit it what happens is you may see that privilege but when you click on that it will just refresh the page it won't open the relevant function that sort of issues can, you come across so can we schedule every five minutes behind the scenes you or something like that in that part yes, of the yes. day? if you want to schedule it here you can go to advanced tab this is applicable for any job it can be report or anything you can go to advanced tab and here schedule by default as soon as possible now you can switch to using a schedule it's very similar to EBS or yeah, yeah, very similar to EBS yes so here the frequency you can set hourly base so here you can specify how many hours once that you can specify that's how you can schedule if you want to schedule okay now i'm not going to schedule straight away i'm going to submit it no parameters required it will be running at instant just say okay L lakshman this is a quick question Please. so when you actually create a user and assign the role two questions on that one is you have options pretty much delete uh, reset the password my question is do we have an option to give a limitation from this month to this month and then after like you know automatically remove that yeah so that preferences you guess you can set it we have a separate uh, place where you can set it up I'll, I'll I'll be showing okay okay but that user level you can go on the, from here will be able to do that okay I'll, I'll, I'll take you through that we'll say that yes we have okay. that option all right thanks fine so after that you just you can keep hitting on this refresh icon so it will show the status the current status for this ldap job is running okay it takes time okay it takes time Lakshman, uh, the rest of the request we can see here uh, all these requests are submitted by the same user or uh, same user same user okay. We do not have uh, permission to see the other uh, other users like EBS. No, no, no. For that, uh, you can have a, some uh, kind of role definition and where you can include uh, full privileges across the user that you can assign to the user so that from that user will be able to have access to other user related requests also. I, by default, as per the standard function, you will be able to see the same user submitted request. I'm using one of the existing user, okay, which uh, we are using for the batch. Okay. Lakshman, a quick question. Yeah. Uh, so basically, LDAP is usually used for uh, single sign-on purposes, and be basically, it's a uh, it's it's for the total organization level uh, uh, security will be given through that. Uh, uh, no. Uh, LDAP, LDAP implementation. No, because you may not use a single sign-on. You may use just only for this Australian product. Okay. If you, are, if you want to go with LDAP also in that LDAP, you can use for the logic of single sign-on. If you are going to have a different applications, if you are going to implement single sign-on concept, if you are going to use this IDM, Identity Manager, where you can implement that single sign-on logic. Okay. You may have, may not have single sign-on. Okay. But still, whatever you do, you have to submit the LDAP job. It will synchronize. You may have a different application. Okay, that related privileges are, it can be the same, only you are going to use this application. You are not going to 
implement the single sign on for a different uh, enterprise applications or company or client will use still you have to do it in both both uh, we will be using if you have single sign on in that case if all that uh, uh, privileges and uh, the user definitions you are going to synchronize where you are going to use a platform called as idm okay so idm it's not only in the fusion we have in the general cases in ebs also you can have use idm for users and the role provisioning purpose for but i mean with the user okay so the moment user puts the user id and password it validates again is the ldap it doesn't see something in the i mean regular uh, user privileges oh, yeah yeah the point is what happens you know like whenever user will click on login the hit will goes to idm ldap directory yeah. Mm -hmm. there okay. it will validate then it will result okay the access so okay so the maybe maybe i think i mean maybe i what i'm guessing is basically as this the instance is dealing with lot of other third party or even lot of weather a uh, uh, lot of other uh, process which might be looking for this uh, global directory and getting the privileges then looking into the based on the privileges it looks into the system wide access then exactly exactly all right So, Lakshman, uh, this one question sounds silly, but let me ask this question. No problem. We can discuss. Uh, you showed <laughs> you showed us like you know how to assign the roles. My my only thing like to find out uh, how who actually creates these roles. I mean, is it like under some module like HCM who basically do do that, or is it predefined by Oracle? You know, when we get the system, these all are predefined by Oracle only. Okay, yeah. and and so you also showed like you know name, and then under that like you know next line was code, and you said like you know the code, uh, you know there are two different um, you know duplicate ones, but don't worry about it. So the code, how, I mean I see like it's same you know code, it's not the same code, but it's the functionality the same. So code can be changed the name conventions. So then what's the oh, point no. of like having a code? no no see what they did is basically when we are even we can create the roles when you are creating the role we will have to give the role name and we will be giving the role code basically there will be only one field to give the code but what oracle is delivering for the some other logic purposes they just created two codes the logic they implemented as to create two codes where they can come up with some some programming logics and etc but uh, the functional front uh, even when we go and create the custom role there will be giving only one code there is no option to give the two codes what oracle did okay okay thank you there could be some uh, technical reasons why they came up with this the two codes but uh, the functionality wise those two roles the same role which has a two different codes specification will have same privileges Logic they built in that mode, which will have two definitions. That's all. Got Thank you. The code, Hi, Lakshman. No, while assigning the role, yeah. The code has to be Why unique in the system sorry. for each. I'm sorry, code? What do you say? The code has to be unique for every role which you define in the system. Exactly, exactly. We'll be creating our own custom roles at that time, just we can understand more detail level. Okay, we'll be creating our own roles, custom roles. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Hi, hi Lakshman. While assigning the role, uh, there is one checkbox assignable. Yeah. What is that? So the role can be assigned to another role. Okay. I I'll take you through that when you go to the next time user definition. I'll, I'll just show you. Yes. So whether that is assignable or not, you can just, uh, based on the role definition, how Oracle did, it will enable or else manually you can do it okay I'll, I'll talk on that for the purpose okay when we go to that page next time i'll show you so more you can understand at the time of uh, role definition time okay so assignable and uh, auto role provisioning we'll, we'll discuss it's just it's a since it's a basic uh, level of understanding user creation i may not touch all the points so we we'll keep working on the same user creation role assignments, many roles will be assigning. So when we are doing that, we'll be touching other points, which are points. Looks like your system is stuck with the running. 
same with everyone yeah. okay. a lot Hello. of people made changes it's running for everybody can you hear me yeah we can hear you sir lakshman no i was saying like you know the ldap is taking so much time so arvin said uh, it's maybe like you know doing for every changes oh okay okay you are talking about that i'm sorry i took in okay so i think like what arvin said yeah, yeah, got brought it. me another question yeah. so can we not like specify the only last change which is the that user only instead of like every changes in the system will happen in last 30 minutes yeah it, it it just it shows that only this current user related only because these are the other jobs which we submitted from the same user okay for other batch those are those all you are able to see here you can filter and you can find out the last one hour lakshman what is uh, i think uh, what was the question was uh, can we restrict parameter with my user changes only not for everybody in the system is there any parameter in so, the running is talking about this that's job? correct no 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 that's what already we discussed that is a point i was saying see when you are submitting this there is no parameter right it's a global like uh, it's an ins- instance level this will be submitted hope the same we just i uh, given the point so i taken the simple example you just created user and assigned the role even i did the same if i am going to submit you don't need to submit there is no other point where you can, you or me can go and specify this should be limited to my user there is no the, such kind of filter option when you run this job instance level how much for a lot of jobs like this in release to will be kind of schedule every 5 minutes that way you don't accumulate lot of changes it's okay. keep running the point, the here the point is very simple the point is very simple basically at the time of implementation at the time of implementation okay we'll be creating the users and we'll be assigning the roles once you done with the implementation once the system go live then rarely if some changes required to the specific user or any new user okay are going to work for the process then only will create the roles uh, will create the user and will assign otherwise it's not going to be very much ongoing process user creation role assignments the time of primarily implementation time will do it later so maybe like uh, maybe in the week one time you may do it in that case just will go and submit this job still you have option of scheduling right that's all uh, lakshman uh... lakshman like in ebs we have the concurrent manager like sometimes okay it is down then we are going to be okay uh, make the up for that yes. concurrent manager and then we are looking concurrent request so do we have the same provision here like okay job yes. uh, manager yes. or something the same uh, equal to concurrent manager ess enterprise scheduler service which is equal to your concurrent manager services okay because the saras window but from there what will do is do will submit the concurrent request for that manager would be there concurrent manager here enterprise scheduler service which is similar service in fusion applications so there is no up and down right there is no downtime nothing so it will be all time active you can say see <laughs> if this ess enterprise scheduler services which is a part of middleware that is separate server will be having that is up means fine otherwise if it is down means this kind of request you cannot uh, submit okay so in case of fusion everything everything even module wise also we have a server concept since it's going to be cloud so separate servers you have for modules also that's how they'll be keep up and running okay so yeah, there will be you don't have, have a concept like a standard manager this job may not sometimes it may be down so in that case we'll just get some error message the service the service is not available okay or inactive that's how we'll get the status okay so what we'll do in that case what do we action point from our side in that case just we'll raise sr to oracle because uh, this application maintenance and uh, db activities all will be done by oracle only in case of cloud 
if this is going to be on premise then we'll rise uh, just you may speak to your dba that's it okay fine so now you can see the status has succeeded okay so if you want to submit resubmit this sorry what happened So if you want to resubmit this, you have an option you can select and you may resubmit again. Okay, that's how just you can deal with this. We'll see this later. So we created a user, we assigned the role for the role synchronization purpose with respect to user. We submitted LDAP job and that is completed. The status of succeeded. Now you can just sign out from this user. Hey Lakshman, how can we see the log and output of this uh, job, like how we do it concurrent manager? Okay, I'll, I'll show you that. I'll show you from this user, anyway. Uh, let, let's uh, go with that same user, then since we have a request and all. Once you select the request below section, it will display that output and all log information etc i'll just take you to that go to schedule process so take there is one uh, other request which we submitted which ended with a warning okay for that if you want to get some any output file or log file here you can find it you have to select and scroll little down here Select another one, same. The output file or log files we just uh, attached here. So you can just click on that. This is a log file and all you can just open and you can see. Okay. Now we'll log into the instance with our user, whatever we created just now. Just confirm as you are going to sign out from this user. So we given the name as ERP cloud, cloud ERP, yes. cloud ERP. Okay, because of the roles what we assigned, the user got the privileges. So you can go to the navigator. From this navigator, you'll be able to have access to schedule process since you have access to employee role and you have access to security console, the reason you are assigned, IT security manager, and you'll be able to have access to FSM, functional setup manager, from where you can access. I have to click on the username or next to user we have down, I mean, arrow mark, which is a drop down option. If you click on that, it will open the panel. So within the panel, if you are able to see setup and maintenance, that means that user has access to FSM. So we get access to FSM because of application implementation consultant role. If you just click on setup and maintenance, this task will take us to functional setup manager homepage. This is the functional setup manager homepage. Okay. So any questions here, please. So Lakshman, uh, in our R2 and EBS, when we create a user and create a password, when the first time user logs in, it's a temporary password and he has to change hmm. the password to the new password. We don't have that concept here anymore. That we have, that we have, but these are just training instances. So that is the reason, uh, like in the previous versions, they just kept the option as this, where you will set a password at the time of creation. When user will log in first time, it will prompt them to enter the current password and enter new password and confirm the same. But in this uh, latest versions, that option they removed. Anyway, these are not going to be client-specific instances. The same logic we have. Even we have an option, if you forget the password, okay, at the time of user creation, okay, at the time of user creation, you can have a security questions. You can answer to that. 
okay like however you have a, when you create some do the registration for any application access and all will have a, some security questions and will answer whenever you forget the password you can click on forget forgot password so instead of contacting the admin you will be able to set the password but in these environments what they did is that process that is able at the time of user creation you don't see something like uh, which, where you'll have a few set of questions and uh, that's how you'll have a set of normally you'll have a set of questions if they enable that uh, option you'll have a set of questions so you have to provide the answers to that whenever you want to reset the password you can just go with that your re reset uh, forgot password then it will be asking the option forgot the username or password if you set password okay you can just provide the username you can say forgot password then submit then it will open up the security questions but in these environments they disabled that uh, option okay thank you yeah yeah but uh, lakshman to share here but in short yeah. like uh, arvin said in the previous ebs version forcefully uh, it was asking to change the password as soon as you log in. So, is there any settings we have to do in this uh, cloud version to uh, uh, forcefully ask the user first time to change it? That is, that is that. Are those yeah as admin part when you are just uh, that uh, I mean that provisions if you want to set it up you just you have to uh, do as an admin part uh, provisions. I mean in these environments Oracle disabled. So when you take that instance by default for client instance will be getting it if you don't need that option just you can uh, talk to Oracle they'll be doing it at instance level where they will have a control on that. Okay. Only in this training environments uh, we don't have but in the previous environment previous cases we have that we have that practice where by default they're given later versions they just remove that since anyway these are going to be just for training purpose or say demo instances. We, we have that that approach. okay even in addition to that you have a forgot password where you will be able to as a user you can go and reset the password by answering to the relevant security questions which are given at the time of user okay okay yeah now just cloud erp And this is how we can create our own user okay based on the rules this is how we'll get the privileges and you click on the username if you are able to see setup and maintenance this will give the access to functional setup manager and here you will be able to see the security console because of it security manager there are many other privileges which will get because of employee user employee role association to this user okay so any questions please uh, uh, was uh, just like to make a quick point. So, so on the password, uh, you know, uh, we had a few questions on uh, what I've observed is uh, in EDS, we used to have the uh, ability to enforce certain password policies, uh, you know, like, like uh, again, the passwords, uh, set the passwords as alphanumeric, etc. Uh, in fusion, what we have, uh, have observed in my implementation is we raised an SR to Oracle. And we uh, enforce that password policy to an Oracle SR. Oracle, in, uh, you know, uh, in turn, uh, you know, puts those password restrictions and constraints on the user account. So this wanted to. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That, that's what like. Uh, so that sort of controls they'll be having whether that uh, some sort of password reset options. I mean, forgot password options we require. Otherwise, when you are creating the user. You want to have a security questions where your users will be able to reset the password as you said the password policies like what are the policies you have to follow first letter should be uppercase and some numeric letter also should be there and then all yes we have to keep in touch with oracle will be able to do it in case of on premise anyway complete full control will be having and we'll be able to do it or else dba can do it that area of configuration or preferences setup we can do it <clears throat> yeah. Uh, Lakshman, I had a question. In your screen, you're showing everything. You are showing me SEM, uh, Fusion, but we can just get a license just for Fusion, uh, sorry, financials, right? 
So I'm seeing all the icons, which includes everything. You know, I can see service, I can see procurement, um, and finance. So can we just buy financial model or? Yes, 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 we can. Okay. But here you are able to see, but you cannot work on any one of this uh, area, mm -hmm. procurement and all, because for the, I mean, we, we don't have any implementations done for any uh, any one of these your product so by default okay. it is all uh, these basically we call as uh, springboard whatever you see here this we call as springboard these all are springboard icons these all will be getting uh, access because of the roles which we assigned say my work it's related to employee role we assigned employer related uh -huh. relevant information you can see here document records mass update and then uh, what is my work for not my work for so okay employer related my team so it, it's related since I don't, if you don't mind you can mute from your end i can hear some noise oh okay go ahead Sorry. i'm getting maybe from someone else i'm muting everyone fine so these are all the roles i mean these all are the springboard icons we are getting based on the roles which we assign to the user it's very primarily whatever the role which you assign application implementation consultant that will default to many privileges here, but until unless you do the implementation, those cannot be used. So when you say it's a product management, this product management function will be getting because of application implementation consultant, which is equal to inventory in EBS application. Okay, here uh, about me, the user, about user. Okay, so wherever that user will be connected to their time entries and other information, okay some competitions and which will be mapped from the relevant application the user will be able to see all that information so benefits hr need to, uh, hcm need to be implemented that has to be connected otherwise nothing this user will be able to do it if employee is going to this employee user is going to user means employee normally normal case right so when if they are going to spend some expense they can raise expense reports from here so that's how these default uh, privileges are given based on the what roles we assign until unless we do the implementation those cannot be used so in the normal cases we will be assigning not these roles to every user what are the roles we assign to this user these we are not going to assign to every user will be assigning the roles which will give the access to relevant primary ledger or business unit or inventory related roles will be mapping we are not going to assign implementation consultant application implementation consultant IT security manager these roles which will give the very common and uh, very advanced uh, configuration related functionalities. Uh, like Lakshman, this uh, springboard that we are seeing is actually the application implementation consultant springboard. Like yeah. what he use, Not uses only for the application implementation uh, consultant. Within the springboard, what are the icons? As well as think these all are coming from these three roles. Most of the functions, most okay. of the icons are added because of application implementation consultant. Few of the icons like about Correct. me, okay, my team all will be added because of employee role. Okay, and the tools and other section will be added because of uh, what I can say this uh, IT security manager. Whatever you see okay. here, the same you can see from the navigator. These are the shortcuts. Say for example, here I am okay. going with about me. I'll click on about me under that. What are the different tasks the employee can be associated? Those all system will display the same. I can see from here. If I go to navigator, this about navigator. me will be as a title. Go to navigator. Okay. So about me. Under about me, these are the different different tasks. The same you can see here. Sure. Okay. Next one, the question. Uh, so, uh, the springboard. I can customize, um, remove, add icons. Yes, yes, yes. Anytime yes, you do it here, you have options where you can personalize. These all are, um, which are enabled, those are getting uh, displayed. Okay, the, the question that um, is why that the company they have a consultant and a permanent employee. So when we create an employee, it's the same for a consultant or employee, or is it different? We can differentiate because in Oracle EBS, we can uh, differentiate with the uh, consultant and employed. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't get you. What's your question? In EBS, we EBS? have uh, the uh, differentiate between employee and consultant. 
and in the uh, cloud do we have a same kind of functionality that's the imply I mean, so how, I mean what imply, based on which point you are telling we can differentiate uh, consultant and employee I think he's asking about contractor, employee, and employee. No, no. Yes, contractor. Yeah. Contractor. Yes. Okay, in that case, it's that not does. like uh, it's not uh, <laughs> consultant. Okay. The employees can be the permanent or contractor. Yes. Here also we have that option. When you create the employee definition, we'll be selecting. Not only that, you that value. It's all about uh, it's a uh, lookup value which you can create and uh, where you can keep as a classification for the employee definition. By default, the seeded environment will get uh, employee for employee creation time two values. One is employee, other one is contingent worker. That's how we'll be able to differentiate. Okay. Uh, how can we customize the navigator? Oh, which navigator exactly? Uh, when you click on the navigation here, yeah, navigator. And sometimes uh, so many icons come. Sometimes uh, it uh, sounds like two is not coming. So what I have to do? See, it's, it's very simple. What are the privileges that user has based on that it will display? Because I have these three roles. The three roles will have access to all these. Okay. If I go and assign the only employee. So you mean to say? Yeah. Tell you me. mean to say navigator can't be customized, right? It's not like navigator is customizing whatever the roles you are assigning to the user, the privileges will get displayed in the navigator. It can't be personalized, sorry, it can't be personalized, right? Be sure, you can. If you want to hide, you can hide it. No. Navigator, I am asking about navigator. <clears throat> not the springboard okay this here whatever system shows it will display by default okay oh, but here what you are able to see uh, those if you want to hide as a shortcut so you can hide it uncheck this but two. this is for a springboard sorry this is for a springboard uh, personalization i am asking same thing i can do with navigator no nav personalization of navigator Navigator, you will just get everything. Navigator will get everything. Okay. 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 I'll, I'll, I'll explain one uh, quick question. So, so um, <clears throat> this being a uh, financial implementation, if you have a full loan implementation including XCM, uh, new search as employees get permission, and, but you know, by creating as new buyers in XCM, uh, is there any information that passes from XCM? Uh, to LDAC, and the reason I'm asking is uh, the employee may have a job change, the employee may get terminated. So, how do those roles get replicated with the LDAC, or how does this um, access get terminated with this termination in the enterprise? So, the, there is no need to be updated with the LDAP. Uh, the employee related information uh, won't get connected. So the employee is going to have certain uh, access privileges. I mean, the role assignments and removing the roles. So in that case, get that will get updated. And all the time, what system will do is, if you are going to have employee, the employee may have a login credentials, may not have. That completely depends. When we are creating for every employee definition time, we'll have a user. If the employee is associated with the user, and what are the changes you do, that will sync. Otherwise, in the normal cases, each and every employee cannot be taken into the consideration of LDAP process. Okay. Yeah. Uh, fine. So now <clears throat> we'll talk about uh, this functional setup manager. Hope the user creation and the role provisioning that what are the roles we assign? Simply, you can say role provisioning also. We just provision the three roles to the user. So now we'll talk about functional setup manager. Okay, so we can have access to functional setup manager with the help of application implementation consultant. Anyway, our current user has access to functional setup manager. How you can navigate to functional setup manager homepage? Just you have to click on this username or next to the user. You have a drop down option. You can just click on any one of this and it will open the panel. There you can find one task called as setup and maintenance. Just click on setup and maintenance. So this we call as 
functional setup manager home page okay now here you can see here you can see all the offerings which are available in this instance this all we call as offering so in this environment we have 25 offerings so these are the different different offerings customer data management enterprise contracts financials fusion accounting hub fh and grants management incentive compensation okay the different different uh, offerings we have a few they just removed but display they given so order management procurement product management project execution management project financial management the ppm is classified to these two parts execution and to financial management sales services student management okay value chain management workforce deployment and to workforce development which are part of hcm so these are the different different offerings we have here you have a filtration also offerings these are the all and here you can see provision for which offerings you have access in this instance but basically when you have a client instance there you will be finding one more value as a subscribed okay so whatever you have a provision all may not be subscribed by you whatever you provision there could be the reason where they given you have to do some dependency setups and all but finally we will be able to use which are subscribed so when you look at your client instance will have one more value as a subscribed once you select it the subscribed offerings only will get displayed here so you can implement them and when you are using since you subscribed oracle will be supported okay here you can find now i am going to select financials so when you select financials here you can find the description about the financials this offering consists of what what business processes or flows can be managed as a part of financial offering that you can see the very high level say about financials so it, just this offering we can use and we can configure the financial flows including assets ledgers this is ledger gl cash cycles invoices and payments account receivables collections and you can set up sub ledger accounting if you want to modify and tax configuration nothing but fusion tax collections means advanced collections module also part of this so this is how you can see and here they are providing few documentation where you can go through and you can understand about this offering offering content guide associated features and the setup task and all what are the task we have to perform just let's get, just look into those uh, information okay so the first point is offering content guide you just the content guide is available with these different format of the files you can just download in any one of the format i'm just going to download this content guide the pdf format just you can open this and i'm guessing like this pdf file we can save in our local hard drive for later reviewing it right yes 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 we can do that you can download and you can save yeah oracle fusion applications 11g so already we discussed that is the actual series of fusion applications like 11a release 12 in ebs and fusion the actual series is 11g within that only 11.1 so 7 or 11.1.8 or 9 10 12 that is a sub versioning that only we are calling as release the actual series is 11g okay as for financials what it the financial offering consists of like what features and all we have all will be listed here the table of content order fulfillment process of customer related payments so just you can go through it anyway once you get instance access you can download and you can look into that you can get to know what exact uh, i mean features or processes are will be part of this offering the procurement related in, in, I means it's integrated uh, idea integrated uh, other functions also to let's say manage payments supplier payments and managing invoices what you can perform 
as a by using this offering each and everything everything just place holds release holds initiate approval task flow view payables invoices hold invoices from the approval task flow approve payables invoices submit an account transaction report create mass edition supply missing exchange rates so these all these tasks you can perform related to specific features manage taxes okay you can find all this information let's scroll down you can see the same with the descriptions also so when you talk about uh, process customer payments what is the meaning of processing customer payments the basic description they give it and process receipts what does it mean by processing the receipts and as related to receipts what they can perform against the receipts import receivables receipt batch update receivables receipt batch create receivable receipts update these are the different different actions which you can perform on the receipt part okay this is how just you can see the information in the content guide for any specific offering okay just you can go through it once you get instance access maybe for just information or else you can just ignore it nothing wrong and we'll come to know just with this our discussions and again associated features in the content guide what the future and future related uh, the detailed task which you can perform but when you talk about associate features exact features they'll be listing out okay, just go and look into the what are the different features we have for financials very high level so these are the features it's just six pages document so financial offering what are the features we have all supplier related uh, tables payment cash management transaction tax expense corporate expenses expense uh, receipt imaging process travel integration fi fixed assets and customer invoice process receivables customer billing revenue recognition customer payments the item collections intercompany budgetary controls financial reporting center reporting very high level okay for for entire financial offering what are the areas of solutions as uh, the features we have that they are just given here the same way if you want to do the see the detailed uh, task list for the finance anyway this task list system will create once you create the project but if you want to get into that it's nothing but list of setups which you have to perform you can just click on this pdf option or any other option it will download the file okay these are the list of setups so here is a total 795 pages document so the complete uh, list of setups including optional mandatory and everything you can find okay so we will go through few Does it have, uh, with the screenshots also sorry is it with the screenshots or which is screenshot application configuration screenshots yeah yeah exactly no 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 just they'll be given the name say payment terms distribution sets these are the setups those each and everything they'll be giving as a separate task manage tax rules task create and maintain the tax rules using the spreadsheet that is defined in the condition where this is how just you can see okay so for example payment terms Okay, manage payables calendars. Nothing but recurring, uh, I mean, special calendar. Uh, in EBS, uh, we call a special calendar that here we are calling as payables calendars. Manage payment terms is one of the tasks with this what we can do description, define and maintain Oracle Fusion payables payment term in used by the organizations. So it belongs to which product? So it belongs to which product family? Whether the setup is required or optional? It's required yes okay so conditionally yes module payables only enterprise application name is payables okay uh, some other technical reference information also given that will be used by uh, people it's web services path for that yeah 
the EV text, uh, they are uh, using only the EV text or, or they are using uh, Vertex also that's uh, in uh, EV text. Vertex anything like uh, the, see the file, uh, Orama's file and all, you'll be able to load it. They give an option here. If you want to integrate, yes, you can do that. For that, you have to use that uh, uh, web services option to bring the data from any third party application. But normally they use uh, the uh, EBTEX, the regular EBTEX. Yes, yes, that uh, solution uh, we have asked us. Yes. Same EBT, they just uh, named here as a fusion tax. That's it. Same setups as is, you, you will be you will be performing. No change. Yeah. <clears throat> so this is how you can see the list of setups which will be performing. So manage distribution sets. Okay, related which module which offering. Just we may go through offline. Okay, the same way like these are not that much uh, relevant to look into that also. Let's just anyway we'll open and see that. The business objects, just we no need to understand. Uh, one more thing, uh, Lakshman, uh, one more question actually. Please. So you, has, you have mentioned that offerings has uh, three options, like basically all provision and uh, subscription, basically whatever we have subscribed with the Oracle, isn't it? Correct. So, so in case if we do a PO related setups for financials and uh, invoicing purpose, so you have to change that offering to provision and then. Make, uh, see, see, we 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 cannot change anything when Oracle is giving the instance based on our subscription. They'll be giving the privileges. Okay, say Oracle is giving provision as a procurement. Okay, then just you'll be able to do the setups. But if you want to when we are going to the dependency setups will be able to do it but if you are go, trying to run the procurement flow okay for that oracle won't accept only for the subscribed only you will be you can run the any process and you can get support from oracle the provision if any other offering is provisioned they, they normally they will provision for other offerings which you are not subscribed since there are some dependency setups that's it. You have a subscription for financials. You are not allowed to create the POs. But for there are some common configurations, right? Those you have to complete. Say you have to create the procurement agent. Procurement agent is part of procurement application, not related to finance. But in finance, if you want to use the supplier definition, if you want to create the complete supplier definition, procurement agent is mandatory. In that case, they will be giving the provision to procurement also or else the other part is the procurement agent they are giving as a part of financials only. That is also another option. It's not required. They have to give the provision also. The same dependency setups for which offering, which are the dependency setups from other applications, those setups also they are giving as a part of the relevant offering. That's how they are giving. Finally, we'll be using, we'll, we'll be implementing and using the offerings which you see as a subscribed. Okay. They may provision in few cases for a dependency purpose, not to use. Up to that, you have to use it, but not for the transaction process. Only subscribed offerings only will be using. Those will be available to do the setups, but won't be available for transaction related process. That's how they will be restricting. So the procurement you, you just provisioned, but because maybe because of some uh, dependency setups that you can complete but when you try to use that you'll be having procurement related roles that roles they will restrict when they restrict the roles then you cannot work on the procurement related process that's how it works okay in case of ebs if you take the license for any application you can have access to the menus then you can create the responsibilities and you can start you can do the implementation you can start using oracle is not going to stop you since everything will be in your control but in case of cloud so everything they'll be monitoring and before that they don't give the privileges exactly for which offerings you are subscribing for relevant role related access only they'll be giving okay now let's look into this uh, business related business objects. These are not uh, required for us to understand. 
just the objects uh, calendars accounting events okay attachments this just object to wise classification they did which will be using across this application so auto invoice line ordering etc etc bank accounts okay the object object specification they just classified all these things okay not future specific some object specific they did so this we want to understand enterprise applications so throughout this financials what are the different applications will be involved that specification they will be giving enterprise application application core setups which will be using as a functional setup manager and some crm related finance and finance so a service oriented structure some domain financial domain common domain grc setup so some dependency where this is connected all that information they are giving so here nothing we have very useful information for us to understand not required okay so this is how just you can get to know about the specific offering any offering you can select okay so for example i am selecting procurement so within this procurement what you will be able to do you can configure to manage your procurement process including you can have a requisitioning process and purchase orders and supplier negotiations and if you want to see the detailed features you can click on this as usual features document will be able to see all the information so this is how you can go through it okay here just along with that you will be finding one more value as a subscribe in case of the instance which will be getting for your client so within that we will we'll start working on it so as we discussed in the fresh environment in the fresh environment we have to enable the offering we have to enable the offering so here you see all these offerings are almost all the offerings are enabled in this but we will go and check any offering is not at enabled here this will change if you see here actions and setup that means that offering is enabled here also you can see this is provisioned in this instance and enabled also you see some other yeah it's a provisioned the access is given in this instance but that is not at all enabled customer data management how to enable it just click on configure so within that we have three options the offering name is customer data management within that we have a three options so data quality customer hub customer data management business intelligence analytics these are the three options if you want to enable first enable the option offering then enable which options we are going to implement again within that they given some sub options just enable okay then you can say go to offerings now you can see this got changed earlier it was there configured now it is showing as enabled so that's how any offering you will be able to enable if you take financials it's already it's enabled in this it's a provision that is the reason we are able to access okay so it's already enabled if it is not enabled here you can find configure tab you can click on that it will open out are the different options are available anyway now whatever enabled will go and see that now we don't have any scope of going and enabling already enabled now we'll just go and see okay which are enabled what we have as a part of this financials so to see that any time like to do any changes also required you can just click on configuration here financial offering within that options we have supplier invoice processing nothing but accounts payables okay so already enabled for implementation first financials we have to enable then within that uh, supplier invoice processing means accounts payables it's already enabled and expenses it's nothing but fusion expense as per ebs i expense and fixed assets customer invoicing process means receivables it's a collections means advanced collections so revenue management the separate module separate option we have so if you are going to enable the intercompany yes we can enable it even if you don't enable here we will be able to do the setups they don't be an issue oh, no no just even if you don't take into the project and all you can do it you should enable it you may not select into project it will come along with the financial modules 
and budgetary control and all in this environment if you are going to implement this budgetary control and encumbrance you have to enable and the relevant finance related so any business intelligence you want to perform analytics and all you can enable it if you notice here you don't find the application called as general ledger when you just enable financials offering you may go with any one of the modular few of uh, module selection by default general ledger will be available as a part of financial offering okay there is no option separate option to go and select i may select financials and do supplier invoice processing remaining all i may not enable if i go and create the project for financials and supplier invoice processing automatically system will create the task list to implement general ledger application that is a fund a foundation basic fundamental uh, part when we are going to implement the financials that is the reason there is no option they given where we have to select okay go and use any application from the financials that would be available okay so that's how we have to enable these different different uh, offerings and options under that yeah tell me any question so that tax, tax will come under financials yeah tax will come under financials only that also you no need to enable it will come by default and uh, for example one if i need here, to select are, every one, uh, one, other one, one second so when you are implement when you are enabling this here there is no specification for country so that may be what you are enabling may be for india of course for india the solution is not ready since this gst and all not ready in the fusion environment whatever just it's a it's a these will be enabling but the tax part will be separately available you don't need to enable anywhere if whatever you are enabling and whatever the implementation you are doing going to do it for us anyway the tax part anyway by default that would be available you can go and do the setups that you don't need to enable as a part of offerings that is a common solutions right so that would be available yeah please so is there any option to select everything together all the options this together this is the process this is only the option how you have so one time one time at instance level yeah so that's how you can lakshman do. yeah please lakshman so what is this uh, referring to implementation status some say is like in progress some say implemented and some is saying not started even though it's all enabled for implementation here they'll give the option so you can specify just i'm just uh, we enable and later for just for information purpose i can come and specify here uh, just this offering just i enable but after enabling whether that is implemented in the system or not i can just go and specify that just for tracking purpose just for information purpose i see yeah this everything we enable say implemented just you can specify implemented okay you can specify like this okay this is how you have to enable offerings and options which are required we'll just go back to other home page of offerings the same way any offering any offering i'll go with the procurement so this is also already enabled let's look into this procurement what are the different options we have nothing but modules go to actions say so change configuration if you want to change you may change or else we'll just look into that sorry i selected order management not procurement This is the procurement change configuration here these are the different modules we have as a part of procurement basic purchasing and self service procurement and supplier invoicing processing this they given as a integration since we have integration they given this offering also within that where some common setups will be there to work on purchasing we have to do some configuration take example of uh, financial options which is a common set up for payables and procurement the same way for relevant process they given within this and supplier portal nothing but i supplier in ebs sourcing module supplier qualification procurement contracts the relevant business intelligence options also they given so which you are going to implement for your client you can just enable and you can use it if you want to implement only basic purchasing functionality you can enable purchasing rest you no need to enable anything all you can ignore only you are going to implement just purchasing product you don't want to implement self service procurement or i supplier 
portals and other sourcing other modules contacts just enable procurement and do purchasing that would be enough okay so this is all just you can enable the offerings once you enable the offerings this will be ready to take into the project creation okay so that's how we can do it the project definition will do in the tomorrow session so any questions from today discussions please uh, Lakshman uh, just uh, like before starting the project so what would be the status my it should be implemented or it should be in progress so in the fresh in the fresh environment uh, just we are going to enable means we are going to implement so ideally you can just take the status as not started once you start uh, doing this implementation you may mark the status as in progress later you may change to implemented but it's not going to impact anywhere it's not going to impact anywhere just for information so these are the statuses uh, manually uh, we can update as and when the project goes further. Basically, see the two points here. When you create the project, project related status would be there. Okay. Say, for example, procurement I have, I'm enabling, means it's it's normally it will will call as just will, we are finalizing the scope, which modules we are going to implement. I enabled it. Okay. I enabled it. Still, I am not sure which modules, which options I have to enable. In that case, I'll keep it as a in progress. That means I not had finalized this offering, enabling uh, this offering related options. So in that case, I may keep as in progress. If I am going to keep procurement as a implemented, implemented means not uh, project implementation. This offerings in configuration related implementation. If I say implemented financial, oh, sorry, procurement, if I'm selecting as implemented, that means you should set the same status to all other. You are saying procurement is implemented. So this is how you can say, or else you have a, just some uh, confusion where this is the sourcing you just enabled, but still not at finalized whether you are going to implement sourcing or not, you want to use or not. In that case, we may keep as in progress. Okay, so this is all just in this level you can set it. It's not related to project which you are going to create. But again, there is no importance to the state which you are going to specify. These are not going to have a control anywhere just for information will be setting up. You can ignore no issues. You don't need to set any status, the implementation status. You don't need to set it up. That's the so, that Sorry? Features. So features will have uh, some controls, some check boxes enabling which process can be used, which process you cannot use, and where it has to be connected. Say for example, in the uh, procurement you are going, you want to use centralized procurement, then you just make sure that that is enabled. Then requisition function by default, just whatever related to that, that all you will be finding. So master items, requisitions, and relevant, you can find here. Okay, certain uh, some areas of functionalities whether you want to use or you want to, you don't want to use that you have to, you can specify by default, everything you can see as enabled. But in few cases, I think in order management and all, there'll be certain functions which you have to go and enable, then only those draw shipment and other functions will be activated in this environment to fun start functioning. Okay. So these are the other controls which you can set at uh, this this level. But when, when it comes to finance, you don't need to do it. For any other modules also not required. If you want to uncheck, you don't want to use. In that case, you can go and specify that. Okay. So for this procurement, uh, I like one. Uh, yeah. Uh, features can be enabled later on. Means. Uh, Suppose uh, in this I didn't uh, enable the requisition hmm. and later on uh, I realized that yeah, I have to do that requisition part also I have to means, uh, make it in process. Yeah. So can we enable the requisition later on? Yeah, you can do that. You can do that but think these are not uh, all the features which will be having as a product. These are the few classification of the features which are available in this level. 
तो टेक फाइनेंशियल्स फाइनेंशियल्स so we have financials here you can go with the futures option okay so these are like just where it is connected you see mostly you don't see some sort of uh, finance related futures okay some regional localization where is applicable that you can specify sub ledger accounting rules maintain sub ledger accounting or maintain sub ledger accounting and uh, accounting method so these just so kind of some preferences you can treat it's not exactly the futures as they given the name all the cases okay that's how it would be if you take expenses here you can set some preferences corporate cards this yes this you can treat as a some uh, like how you are going to travel integration you want to do with this fusion expense or not expense receipt imaging we have amazing solution where you can import the receipts and based on that you can create the expense reports and all whether you are going to use a corporate uh, card functionality those you can specify accordingly system will support In most of the cases those are not exact futures the some just kind of preferences if you look at finance level you can understand that okay by default mostly everything will be enabled that you don't need to change it primarily you have to choose offerings and options then you can proceed yeah please so lakshman this is arvin their implementation status when you do that drop down on that i see only three options correct can you add more statuses if you want is it something like a lov or only no, those no. three what you get it from oracle those are seeded values those are seeded values you can choose any from any one of those value depending on what is the progress of the project so picking any value will not have any effect in the system anywhere no no, no, no. just it gives you a visual status no. on that particular task under that offering exactly exactly it won't have any impact okay okay, okay. the, the first Thanks. environment you can just uh, just go and enable everything don't touch this implementation status it's not going to stop you anywhere see here still in this customer invoicing processing so that status is not started but we implemented we implemented receivables also so for multiple batches many people are practicing in this instance but still we are able to do it it won't have any impact just for information that's it okay just for information okay even the same applicable for project level also project level or specific task level if you set accordingly the progress will be tracked otherwise there won't be any progress to see how many implemented or how many one work in process how many completed how many ended with some risk so we'll we'll see that once you create the project uh, those uh, status tracking how we can do what are the different options we have we'll see that but those all are not at all mandatory required only to track the status of the project those are required at project level so not at uh, this offering level offering level just for information okay so any other questions here please no questions we can wind up for today we'll connect tomorrow same time yeah uh, uh, lakshman like for localization part uh, so the, this localization country specific so that is the part of setup or do we have something on the top here setup only setup only so whatever you do with the uh, ebs uh, ebt in fusion case okay so that here also will be doing with the fusion tax and wherever you have a separate patch application depending on the country localization if you take india localization we apply the patches or else uh, along with that they'll be provided some seeded menus so the same practice here also applicable but for as of now there is no solution for india in the fusion environment i mean india tax taxation the gst is not uh, solution is not ready in fusion okay Uh, Lakshman, a uh, quick question, Lakshman. Uh, okay. Suppose uh, if someone wants, some of the clients only want to have general ledger. Mm. So is it 
mandatory to enable those uh, financial features or the modules to make only GL work. Most you can go and enable financials. That will be enough. Enable only the checkbox enough. So it is not required to enable any other option. They, are, they don't want to use it, right? So not required. Okay. Only this checkbox. Got it. Thank you. So when you enable financials, what are the hidden options we have? Those will just will be available for implementation. Okay, got it. And another uh, another thing, uh, Lakshman, uh, uh, it was agreed that uh, you will be providing the step by step guide in terms of uh, performing the setups. Who said? So that? we Sorry, still... didn't tell that. Somebody was asking in the previous sessions also. We told them. So we are not going to provide any step by step document. We'll provide some a student guide where you can find some configuration. That's it. I'm really sorry. Like uh, I don't know. Like anybody committed? Because, uh, that? Yes, uh, uh, because I was uh, I was in uh, discussion. We'll talk, on that. We'll talk on that. The answer is no. We are not going to provide step by step uh, procedure document uh, for this entire course which we are dealing. I'll be showing everything in step by step process. The classes, but the same replica of document we are not going to provide. We'll talk on that after this session. Okay, meeting. Okay, please. Yeah. So, Lakshman, uh, um, you just mentioned about the taxation is not implemented in India yes, for fusion. You're correct. Uh, I'm assuming. Like, I'm sorry. Yeah, correct. Yes, you are right. Right. Please go. Right, ahead. and so 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 just a scenario based. Let's suppose if my client implemented uh, Fusion and previously, like, you know, they were running on R12. Oh, which country? And R. Let's say, like, you know, the client is in USA, oh. but the supplier also, procurement is also happening, like, you know, from India as well. So both, you know, USA and India need a taxation setup. So how do you see, I know, like you said, like the patch is not there yet. So what is the best solution for handling those kind of situation for fusion? So <clears throat> the case is uh, the client operating business in the US and India, they want to move to fusion, right? The right. System in EBS. The best option is they can wait uh, till Varakil will come up with the uh, India taxation solution, then better they can move. Otherwise, they can move just only uh, U.S. operations only. Since for India, other solution, other solution would be they can use third-party ta taxware like Vortex or taxware, and using web services Fusion, you can connect it for India do, because do, they stay on top of. Do you think of. we have solution for India from taxware? Usually, taxware they go really fast compared to Oracle. For India, that we have to see. I don't think so. For India, we have. From tax where or what export from other fabrics or etc. I don't think so. GST is used elsewhere in the world, so they can replicate really fast. They need to change the only categories and percentages, probably. Yeah. Before that, we have to see whether uh, for India taxation that solution is available or not from any third party vendor. Okay, that is another point which you have to consider. Understand. Yeah. Fine. So, any other questions, please? No questions, we can wind up. Thank you, Lakshman. Yeah. Have a good day. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, see you tomorrow, same time. Have a good day and good night. Thank you. Lakshman, quick note before we leave uh, can you instruct uh, them to send link and username and SPVs so that we can, now that we have first lesson on the system, we can practice tonight, please? Sure, sure. We'll be getting within one hour. Without any. Thank you, Lakshma. I'll do it. Thank you. Talk to you tomorrow. See you, See you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, Lakshma. Yeah. Also, Lakshman, uh, the the Google Drive link for these uh, these session videos. Yes. Yes, I'll be sharing. Uh, thank you, sir. Because I've missed the first half an hour uh, class. Okay. I'll, I'll be sharing within one hour. You'll be just getting the guys who already subscribed. Okay. Everybody will be getting the instance videos, previous batch as well as current batch videos. Okay, perfect. Yeah, we'll do it. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you.